This conference will now be recorded. Hi all. Good morning. Good evening. Welcome to the day one of Jmeter Beginner to Master with Groovy, Dynatrace, Kubernetes, Docker, InfluxDB, Grafana, Blazemeter. So we had the demonstration yesterday in which we saw the topics which we are going to cover as part of this training. And then we also have started the introduction to performance testing. So let's continue from there. Any queries, anyone from yesterday's session? So let me share my screen. Hope my screen is visible to all of you. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yesterday we saw the introduction, like we saw what are the different types of non-functional testing, right? Or what are the different types of testing which are covered under non-functional testing? And out of that, performance testing is our scope, right? Performance testing is our scope. So, why performance testing is required? Why performance testing is required, okay? So, three major things, guys. So, first is speed. Now, as I was telling you, we are using any application. That application might be working functionally. There is no functional defect, okay? The functionality is completely working fine. But if the application is slow, do you think the user is going to have a good experience of the application? Is the user going to like the application? No, right? Because with the age of internet today and we having 4G, 5G available, people or users, they do not want to compromise on the speed, right? They do not want to compromise on the speed. They want applications to open as quick as possible, right? And that is why it becomes very critical for the organizations that the application should be well performing. Now, when I'm saying well performing, Apart from the functionality, the application should open within no time, like let's say two, three, two, two, sec two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. The industry standard is maximum five seconds per page. Per page loading should be within five seconds. So what is speed? Speed is nothing but how fast the application is opening or how fast the application is responding so the mobile applications also right if when you are browsing through the mobile application if it is slow then you know you are not going to like the application and for the end user it could be only about liking the application or not liking the application and if the user does not like he or she may not come back and use that application, rather go to some other application. And that application will be the competitor of the previous application. For the end user, they should, they could only be applications. But for the company who is the owner of those applications, for them it is a business. Right? And no, you, no company, no business in this world would like to lose their customer. Understood? No one would like to lose their customer. So that is why they have to focus on the performance of the application. So the first factor, why we are doing performance testing, 
we are doing performance testing to validate to verify the speed of the application the speed with which or the speed at which the application opens clear all of you the next factor is scalability now what is scalability as i told you any business in the world would never want to lose their customers plus they would never want the number of customers to remain constant for example let's assume any e-commerce application today has 5000 customers or 5000 users so two years down the lane three years down the line will they still want those 5000 customers to be there in the application or 5000 users you using the application no right definitely they want to have more number of users and that user volume could be 100% or 200% increase from the current date right 100% 200% 300% like twice thrice right of the current volume now today the application is scattering to 5000 users and the application speed is let's say very good application speed is very good and already the application is in production the infrastructure is already there but let's say tomorrow we have 10,000 users tomorrow means one year down the line or two years down the line we have 10,000 users now with the same infrastructure is the application going to support 10,000 users basically the increased volume of users is the application going to support so that increase could be in the number of users could be in the volume of data anything basically the increase in the load on the application okay so the question here is whether the current infrastructure is going to be able to cater to the 10,000 users which will happen let's say after two years it is performing very well for 5,000 users as on today okay but the question arises is will that be able to cater to the additional volume and that property okay that property is known as scalability so we are going to verify the scalability of the application also okay so first is speed this application speed should be good enough for you know the user to experience of a good performance with the application similarly scalability as i told you maybe the application is having very good speed today but whether that speed is going to remain constant when we have increase in the volume increase in the data load or increase in the number of users okay twice or thrice increase now i will say that okay the speed is also very good the scalability is also very very good okay speed is good scalability is good for example i want to know okay that when that application is having good speed is is having good scalability that is only for a shorter duration of time or it is also for a longer duration of time are you getting me the speed the scalability whatever we are having that is going to be there in the application for a shorter duration or for the long duration of time also because if the application speed and scalability is there for a shorter duration of time and it is not able to support for a long duration then it is of no use again right so we have to validate the reliability of the application also okay we have to validate the reliability of the application the application should be reliable are all of you clear 
these are the three important factors based on which we are doing the performance testing we want to measure we want to verify we want to validate these three critical factors for doing performance testing understood everyone now in the world of performance testing there will be different terminologies which you will come across okay there will be different terminologies which you will come across the first one is a virtual user now you will be thinking right what is a virtual user user is a user now what is this virtual user so we are going to do the performance testing of different applications it could be web application it could be mobile application anything right now in production or in actuality the real users are going to use the application but let's say i told you the user has to support 10000 sorry the application has to support 10000 users so if it has to support 10000 users i need to verify whether it is working with 10000 users or not only saying the statement that it is going to support 10000 users is not sufficient right it has to be verified it has to be validated so that test has to be done now when any user is using the application a real user a physical user right they will be doing the different transactions on the application now similarly when the 10000 users will be there they will be real users 10000 real users now is it possible for you because you have to test that scenario with 10000 users will you tell me that okay what will i do i will hire 10000 people i'll hire 10000 people to work for me on an hourly basis and what will i do there what will i tell them first of all i'll set up an infrastructure for them means i'll have 10000 desks 10000 computers 10000 chairs and the uh, network connectivity blah 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 etc right then i'll tell them okay you guys come on this day at this particular time and we will do a test all of you have to start launching the application at the same time so do you think this is a practical scenario guys do you think it is possible it is not possible because there could be so many challenges right that is why and again you set up that but again to measure the performance and all so many things are required right so why to take headache and go into those things when we have different performance testing tools who can generate virtual users for us virtual users are nothing but the simulated users understood simulated users the tool will simulate one user so whatever is the number of users you provide the tool is going to simulate those many users and what those users are going to do the same steps but a real user is going to do on an application the same steps the virtual user will do so in the world of performance testing when we say the number of users with which we are going to test that is virtual users understood everyone or any queries next response time response time very very important guys okay so let me draw a figure for you This is my client, client, 
client means i hope you will understand client means one browser browser can be one client example mobile device can be one client and this is my server this is my server okay and the request okay whenever the client is trying to access the application the request will go from the client to the server right guys then the server is going to process that okay the server is going to process that request and then send the response back to the client and then you are able to see that response on your browser or on your device request goes from the client the server will process that request and then it will send back the response to the client now when the server is going to process the request it has to take some time right because processing is nothing but some operation so definitely the server is going to take some time to process that request once that request is processed it generates a response that gen that response will also take some time to reach from the server to the client right the response also will take some time to reach from the server to the client now what is response time response time means for example let's say the time taken for this request to go from the client to the server is x server takes y time to process the request and in z time your response goes to the client okay so the time taken by the server to process the request plus the time taken by the response okay to reach the client that is your response time i'll repeat the time taken by the server to process the request plus the time taken by the response to reach the client from the server is known as your response time okay means within this much of time the client is going to get a response that is the response time now what is response guys you all understand right for example when you are going to any website Hello. yeah hi sir can you repeat it once again what is the response time yes yes i am repeating yeah so so whenever a client or a user is access, accessing any website on a browser for example okay you give a url you give any url once you give any url you then you are seeing one web page on your device or not once you give the url hit enter then you are able to see a web page clear now how did that web page come on your browser how did that web page come on your browser the web page came on your browser as a response you first of all try to access one url that url went to the server in the form of the request okay in the form of request it went okay in the form of request that particular url went to the server the server understood that okay the server understood that request and then the server processed that so whatever url you try to access the server process that url for that url whatever is the html page okay whatever is the web page the server sent back to the client as a response and it got displayed on your browser on your device 
understood what is response what is request now when the request goes from the client to the server the server will take some time to process that request right it has to first understand whether it is a valid request or not whether that request can be understood by the server or not okay so the server is going to take some time to process that request and once that is processed it generates the response okay the server generates the response like i told you the web page whatever you are going to see on your browser so that is the response that response will also take some time to reach to the client because the web page whatever you are seeing that is nothing but information right packet of information now if you all know the data gets transferred in the form of packets or bytes right so the total response when it gets transferred from the server to the client so the processing time taken by the server to process the request plus the time taken by the response to reach from the server to the client that is known as your response time so y plus z will be your response time understood all of you any queries anyone no next is throughput throughput so i told you request will go to the server server will process that it will generate the response and as i told you this response is also nothing but pack information information okay so throughput is nothing but the amount of information processed by the server or the amount of information generated by the server now when one user is accessing the application when 50 users are accessing the application when 100 users are accessing the application do you think in all these three cases the amount of information generated by the server will be the same just think one application is let's say accessed by one user or 50 users or 100 users the amount of information which will be generated by the server is it going to be the same anyone okay let me explain in this way you have a file okay you have a file you have to share it with one person you have to share it, share it with 50 persons you have to share it with 100 person persons so the amount of data that will be transferred when you are sharing with one person or 50 persons or 100 person person is that going to be the same no right for one user it will not it will not be the same because for one user you just have to send the file once but for 50 users or 50 persons you have to send maybe it is the same file but 50 copies will be sent right to 550 different persons similarly for 100 persons 50 different copies will be sent are you getting me so when the number of users are going to increase on the system on the application the throughput is going to increase throughput is nothing but the amount of information processed by the server amount of information processed by the server are all of you clear so the units will normally be you know bytes per second kilobytes per second megabytes per second right throughput understood everyone then request 
terminology you are going to use request as i told you we have to be very much clear on the terminologies we should use the correct terminology okay request i explained you that when the client is trying to access any url on the server that is a request will be generated right a request will be generated from the client to the server understood all of you now what that request contains all those things we are going to see in details in the uh, session when we are going to cover http protocol okay then the next one is response the next terminology which you are going to frequently use is response now what is response as i told you the server is going to process the request now after processing that request whatever information is generated that has to be sent back to the client so that information which is generated is nothing but the response okay for example if i am trying to launch facebook i'm trying to launch facebook so let me show you one example okay I am giving, let's say, www. Facebook. Com. What did I provide? I provided the URL www. Facebook. Com. But when I gave that request, right? I when I hit on that URL. what happened you know a request went to the server saying that the user is trying to launch www.facebook.com now when you provide that you are able to see this one on your browser right you are able to see this particular page on your browser now what is this what is this this is your response the server sent this response to you and it got displayed on the client on the browser now you see i just kept www.facebook.com i click on login okay i click on login so in that case there is another url right there is another url now if i give www.facebook.com/login okay this is another url i'm giving www.facebook.com/login earlier i gave only facebook.com now you see now i saw a different page right now i see a different page why i see a different page because the request which i tried to send to the server is different so i hope you understand based on the request which is sent to the server the server processes that request and generates a response the response will be different for different requests okay the next one is transaction very very important guys transaction what is transaction whenever there is an interaction between the client and the server means whenever one request goes to the server from the client 
the server processes that request that is a transaction guys whenever any event takes place means a request gets generated from the client to the server the server processes that sends back the response so that is one transaction understood all of you now when you launch any application when you log in so into the application yeah sorry uh, what is transition one second please yes yes so whenever the client provides any request generates any request like i want to launch the application i want to log in into the application i want to search a product i want to send a friend request i want to accept a friend request i want to post a message i want to send a file right so whatever you are trying to do when there there is a request which is generated and it is going from the client to the server the server has to process that request send back the response so that is known as a transaction the interaction happens between the client and the server understood so this particular figure which i drew so okay the client server I'll say this as a transaction, the client generated a request, it went to the server, the server processed that, the response came back. Understood? Like I told you examples, your login, your launch of the application, you launch the application, right? You launch the application, you log in into the application, you try to search a product, you try to purchase a product, you try to search a flight you try to book a flight understood so these you want to cancel a flight these all are you know example of transactions okay transition is very very important guys because all that we are going to do in performance testing is to measure the response time of different transactions understood we want to measure the response time of different transactions how much time a login took how much time uh, the launching of an application took how much time it took for you know to search a product or how much time did it take to book a flight understood now same thing guys when one user is accessing the application and 50 users are accessing the application and 100 users are accessing the application the number of transactions which are going to happen are they going to be the same in all the three cases the number of transactions that are going to happen is it going to be the same in all the three cases the total number of transactions anyone definitely not right if let's say the transactions are launch login and logout simple the user is trying to launch one application then log in into the application once it logs in then it again logs out three transactions in total for one user now if 50 users are going to do that so for one user there was three transactions so for 50 users there will be total 150 transactions similarly for 100 users there will be total 300 transactions right so whenever your number of users are increasing okay whenever your number of users are increasing the number of transactions are also going to increase that brings us 
to next terminology that is known as transactions per second because with the number of users increasing on the application the number of transactions are going to increase so one critical measurement which we need to make during performance testing is how many transactions are happening per second continuously the users will be using the application right continuously the users will be using the application so every time there will be transactions happening so we have to measure how many transactions are happening per second understood all of you how many transactions per second are happening that is one critical measurement now one question guys one question to all of you for a certain number of users okay for a certain number of users if my response time is high okay if my response time is high the transitions per second is going to be high or is going to be low think over it everyone if my response time is high the transitions per second is going to be high or low Okay, let me explain. Suppose your launch is taking three seconds. Your login is taking five seconds. Your logout is taking two seconds. Total response time is how much? Launch is taking three seconds. Login is taking five seconds. Logout is taking two seconds. Total 10 seconds right that is your response time for the total but for each it is like three five and two so if i say that there is only one user accessing the application and for launch it takes three seconds for login it takes five seconds for logout it takes two seconds so in a minute in a minute how many logins how many launch how many logout will happen? In one minute, how many launch, how many login, how many logout will happen, guys? Anyone? It will be a total of six, right? Ten seconds. In one minute means sixty seconds. So launch, login, logout took 10 seconds in total. So if there is only one user, I will be able to do six launch, six login, six logout. I mean six times I'll be able to do the launch, login, logout in one minute. Because one minute contains 60 seconds. Understood all of you or not? But now the question I asked you was, if my response time is high now in that case let's say i tell you launch takes five seconds login takes five seconds logout take five seconds so in one minute same time frame same number of user i'll be again able to do how many transactions four only right means four times only i'll be able to do the launch login logout in one minute understood or not everyone see here launch takes let's say three seconds login takes five seconds 
logout takes two seconds total 10 seconds so in one minute total or six times the transitions will Everyone understood this? But for example, the same thing. Same thing takes higher, longer time. It takes longer time. Total is 15 seconds, right? So in one minute, Four times or not, guys? All of you understood this. You have to understand this. This is with pure mathematics. Simple thing, right? So, the question which I asked you with increase. So, this is interview question, guys. With increase in the response time, your number of transactions per second are going to increase or decrease. So, they are going to decrease. So, remember this response time and transitions per second are inversely proportional to each other are inversely proportional to each other okay then comes iteration and iterations per second similarly what is iteration i told you launch is one transaction login is one transaction logout is one transaction but when I do launch, login, and logout, that is my one iteration, one complete flow. When I am doing, that is one iteration. So, your iteration will consist of different transactions. I will repeat again. Launch is one transaction. Login is another transaction. Log logout is another transaction. So, when you do launch, login, and logout, that is one complete flow, for example. So, I will be saying that my one iteration is one complete flow, that is log, launch, login, and logout. So, in one iteration, in this case, I am going to have three transactions, three transactions. Now, if your response time is very less, then you can have more number of iterations per second or per minute or per hour. So, iterations per second is nothing but the number of iterations happening per second. Understood everyone? Understood the difference between transaction and iteration? Iteration is going to repeat. Okay. Launch, login, logout. Let's say. Launch is one transaction. Login is one transaction. Logout is one transaction. Okay. You have three transactions. And this, when you do launch, then login, then logout, that is one complete flow. Let's assume. Okay. Because there will be more. Uh, transitions also right once you log in you will do some other activities in the but i'm just saying that you are launching an application you are logging in into that and you're logging out from it okay so each of them is one one transaction now when i complete each of those transaction once i will say that i have completed one iteration that is one complete loop then when i do this Again, I want to perform launch, login, logout. That will be my second iteration. So your iteration is going to have multiple transactions inside it. Clear? Yes. yes. Next. Next is think time. Very, very important, guys. Think time. Interview question must. What is think time? 
when you are using any application as a real user okay like you are launching one application you are logging into the application you are searching let's say product then you are purchasing a product then let's say you are logging out now when you are launching and lo as soon as you are launching at that point of time right away are you logging in or at least there is a time gap of like two to three seconds five seconds similarly once you log in as soon as you log in you right away start doing the search or there is a time gap again similarly once you do the search when you try to book or purchase again you will take some time in between so that is that could be intentional that could be unintentional right but there is a time gap because the user thinks that what he has to do next right so that time which is elapsed in between different transactions remember guys the time which is elapsed in between different transactions by a real user is known as think time is known as think time now in performance testing also we have to simulate the production behavior the real user behavior in production so if a real user is having think time we need to implement think time in performance testing also so with the tool we will be able to do or we will be able to implement think time okay next is spacing what is spacing i told you iteration right launch login logout is one iteration then you will do a second iteration let's say launch login logout now you will ask me why will i do two iterations why will i do three iterations now in performance testing when we are going to do the test we are going to do the test like let's say for one hour or two hour or eight hours 24 hours 48 hours because you are continuously constantly putting the system under a considerable load and you are checking the performance of that application understood so your one iteration like let's say launch login logout i told you they will hardly take 10 seconds 15 seconds now if it is taking 15 seconds how will you continue the test for two hours so you have to repeatedly do those transactions one after the another launch will be done first then log in then log out for example once logout is completed then again i will launch so i am doing different iterations or multiple iterations understood everyone during the performance test so the time gap which i want to give in between two iterations is known as pacing very very important for from interview point of view you will be asked what is the difference between think time and pacing think time is the time difference or time gap which is elapsed in between two transactions pacing is the time gap time elapsed in between two iterations hope you are clear guys okay so think time and pacing network latency network latency now for example your application is designed in such a way that the server will be able to respond very fast the processing will be done very fast but the request has to go from the client to the server the response has to come back from the server to the client and this request and the response will be sent in the network through the network now you have a thin pipe you have a thick pipe okay you have a thin pipe you have a thick pipe the amount of water which can flow in a thin pipe will be different than the amount of water which can flow in a thick pipe 
right? Because the bandwidth is different here. The width of the pipe is different. Similarly, from a network point of view, if the bandwidth is less, less amount of information can flow. If the bandwidth is high, your more amount of information can flow. If I am sending the same information at the same time, if the bandwidth is higher, it will take less time to reach to the server. But if the bandwidth is lower, it will take more time to reach to the server. Similarly, the response will also take either more time or less time depending on the bandwidth. Even if the server is the same, so the processing will be the same. The processing time of the server will be the same. But the time taken by the request and the response to reach from the client to the server and from the server to the client will be different because it depends on the network bandwidth. That is your network latency, guys. Time taken in the network. Time taken in the network. Understood, everyone? Next, non-functional requirement. As I told you, performance testing is one type of non-functional testing. Now, in testing, we get the requirements, right? In functional testing, we get functional requirements. We have to verify the functional requirements. Similarly, in non-functional testing, we are going to get non-functional requirements. We have to test and verify the non-functional requirements. Some examples I'll give. The application should support 10,000 users. The user should be able to log in into the application within three seconds. Okay, these are different types of non-functional requirements. These are different types of non-functional requirements. 100 transactions per second should happen in the application. Okay, so what will happen is in your project, you are going to get the non-functional requirements. Based on the non-functional requirements, you will be preparing your performance strategy, performance test plan. And then you will do the execution also in order to verify your non-functional requirements. Next one, guys, test script and test scenario. So in order to verify our non-functional requirements, we are going to develop the test script. Like in functional testing, we write test cases, right? We write test cases. But here we are going to develop. Okay, we are going to develop, create test scripts with the help of the performance testing tool. Now, what is the test scenario? So, how I am going to execute that test is my test scenario. Those we will see in details later. Then comes load generator. Very, very important, guys. What is load generator? Load generator is a machine. It is a system. Okay, basically, as I told you, the performance testing tool is going to generate, create virtual users, 500 users, 1000 users, 10,000 users. So how these users will be generated? They will be generated by the tool and that tool will be installed on a machine. That machine is known as load generator machine because that machine is going to generate the number of users, number of virtual users with the help of the performance testing tool. So the machine which generates the load which is going to be used during the performance testing is known as the load generator machine. The load generator machine will have the tool installed on it and the virtual users will be generated load generator generate it it generates the load on the application clear all of you so these are the common terminologies which you are going to see which you are going to use in performance testing and during your interviews you will get questions around it as well okay then we will go to the next slide that is our 
test phases what are the different test phases in performance testing which we are going to see it in the next session okay so the main test phases in performance testing are requirement gathering test plan and design test execution test resource analysis and test reporting so we are going to see in details what all different activities take place in each of these pages here all of you so with this i stop the session for today thank you all for joining